Good morning, and welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bergeron. I welcome you from my heart into this beautiful space. Uh, good morning, Becky, and ask that each of us who come here today to share in wisdom and kindness and love to take a moment to honor all of those who are both suffering from fear and exhaustion and um, helping each other in California during these fires, which are causing such tremendous unrest in the hearts and souls of our brothers and sisters. It's, uh, these are strange times we're going through. Um, part of which my talk this morning is the evolution of the planet, but more so our own evolution as, as beings and returning from separation and becoming whole once again in new ways and new levels of conscious awareness. So that is pretty much why I do these talks is to not only assist others, but to assist myself. Um, I'm not separated by any means from each of you and the issues that we face every day. And so as I go through these, um, the messages come through and um, I have to reflect and own them uh, before I speak about them. So once again, welcome. Good morning. I see you gathering on the sidelines and, and I bless you all and, and thank you for uh, showing up and, and being here and, and taking the time to want to be aware of something different. So with that um, opening, I want to just share that, yeah, the message of this morning was written this morning um, and came through. Uh, as it's been a, a tremendous week for me uh, with what we call planetary healing. And I've been called uh, to several places in my own area, uh, Mount Agameticus, um, Sagamore, the Sagamore Creek, to do healing and releasing of ancient energies. And now with the fires in California, I'm also called to send energy and create crystal grids and work with the elementals and the humans in that area to um, bring a sense of calm and balance to that area. And so for those of you who are called to do that work as well as I am, I again ask you to continue. Uh, we're in this together and uh, in the process we uplift each other. So this morning, the talk is going to be about blame, balance, and evolution. And it's funny how this week I found myself um, wanting to blame somebody. <laughs> Wanted to blame somebody or something uh, continually for the chaos, for the disruption, for the the way politics and um, and human just meanness to each other is appearing and happening. And then we have the earth with the devastation that's going on. And I, I just wanted to blame somebody. And I, and I had to stop and come to a place within myself and sit quietly and realize that uh, years ago, when I was in AA, which is Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, I remember a statement 
that somebody brought up and it was about pointing your finger. And whenever you point your finger at somebody else, you are, you have three pointing back at you. And I, that always stuck with me because I realized that for the most, most of my discomfort is caused by me. Um, my interpretation of things or my lack of wisdom in certain areas. And so to this week, uh, the frustration got to the point where, yeah, I wanted to blame somebody. I wanted to scream at somebody. I, my anger rose, and uh, which is not usual for me. I've been, you know, amazed my, at myself at my lack of um, wanting to express anger. So I thought about it, and and that statement that of the three um, fingers, I. I think I read somewhere it might be Navajo, originally Navajo, and it was very uh, precious to them not to point the finger at somebody because that was powerful. You were directing energy and you were, and it was accusatory. And um, so it was not done under many circumstances. And uh, so I read uh, a, an article from Psychology Today and it says, maybe you know the saying, when you point one finger, there are three fingers pointing back to you. And it went on to say, Jesus had a version of this wisdom when he said, don't focus on the speck in your brother's eye while ignoring the log in your own eye. And uh, it pertained to uh, cruel accusations, of course, but uh, we all need to hear the words of reason that say, look in the mirror, sister, you might be talking about yourself. And I laughed when I read that because it's so true. We always reflect what is, we are the mirror for ourselves and you are the mirror for me. Um, and I was given this beautiful uh, medal. Um, it's called a, a melong. Uh, from the Bon Po um, tradition by our beloved sister, Alaya, who does a show on Saturday mornings here on Humanity uh, as a as an emblem of protection as I worked in the fields with the water and the elements and, and things this, this past week. And uh, bless you, Alaya, for all that you do for us. And And so with all of that said, I, I, the reflection this morning as I started to write my, my show notes um, was why do we, you know, we, why do we do this blaming and, and what is that all about? And, and is it, is it really beneficial? And the answer for me on, I, I hope many of you resonate with this is it's, it's not beneficial, but it's an act of despair. Um, and partly because we're not taking the time to grieve. And so when we don't take the time to grieve, we want an instant release. And the first thing, or the easiest, simplest thing that we learned when we were children was to blame somebody else to point the finger at somebody else and therefore divert the energy that's building up within us and other people are noticing and directing their energy towards us to somebody else. So it's an act of deflection because in that moment, we're really wounded. We're really wounded in our hearts. And it doesn't matter how that wound appears to us or how that wound um, is opened. The fact remains that now the wound is open. And what should we do? We What should we do with an open wound? More than address it. Let's get it cleaned. The wound is open. Let's clean it. Let's sew it back up if we have to. Let's stitch it. Let's put a Band-Aid on it or bandage it. And, and let's nurture it and, and, and bring it back to health. Yesterday, when I was working on the fires, I created a, I was guided to draw a grid uh, around Ojai, California. 
to pr to protect and to raise the energy. Um, it was in the shape of what another woman said. She saw she saw it as an open wound, an open wound. And I was amazed when she said that because it's exactly what I felt uh, when I worked on the water and the land on Sunday was that Mother Earth has these deep inner wounds that are being released right now. Um, and so as she evolves, these wounds have to heal. So too, as without, within, we are evolving as a species. Everything on the planet is evolving because the planet is evolving, the universe is evolving, and beyond that is evolving. And, you know, it doesn't matter how far out we look or how far in we look, we're part of a whole, a whole cosmological being. And so one can't evolve without the other. Because if they don't, then they no longer exist. And that is a choice for some living forms, is to not, to choose non-existence during the process of evolution. So what happens for each of us is we're going through this releasing process. But what's more important is that we take time to grieve. To grieve at perhaps beliefs that we had that are no longer true or to dreams we have that are not going to be fulfilled. And instead of punishing ourselves, just pour out our hearts um, to Mother Earth and, and align with her as she's suffering and say and realize that we're in this together. There is no separation. The separation is the problem. And that's what we're healing in the larger scope of things. So, as I said, it's blame. What do we do? We point the finger, you did it, you did it, you did it. People are pointing the finger at me, you're doing it. What do we become then? We become defensive. So my guides this morning, as I sat down to write notes, um, give me this, and they play with words, and the word was blame. And what I what they do is they take the first letter of each of each letter in the word, and then I ask for a meaning or a, a give me some reasonable meaning for this. So the word was blame. B being. L lost. A amidst. M multiple. There's two words: multiple and manifested. And the letter E was energies and egos. And so when you read that, it's being lost amidst multiple slash manifested energies slash egos. And this is this is what we're this is what's happened when we blame, when we go into that energy of blaming, be it ourselves or someone else, is is we're confused, we're imbalanced. And in that moment, what we're really truly trying to do is to recover our energy back into a cohesive wholeness. And we're struggling. It's almost like at the edge of the cliff and you're falling and you're, you're gonna grab anybody or the person who's drowning, the person comes to rescue, you're gonna drag them down with you. And, and it's just a natural process. So blame is not something that we can necessarily say is a bad thing. But it is, in essence, a calling card for us to look at ourselves and say, wow, what is going on? What is going on? So when we find ourselves blaming ourselves or somebody else, um, take a moment, recognize that. Allow it to be the mirror for you to look in and say, what is really going on? And then when that, if whatever comes up is, is painful, sit with it. 
own it, express it to yourself. And hopefully you can find some compassionate friends or people to express it with um, and, and share it and, and, and grieve it and mourn it because it's, we can't carry this pain anymore. And so like Mother Earth, Mother Earth can't carry this pain anymore. It has to be released. So this energy is definitely chaotic and both in the earth and in us. And we're just seeking some comfort and, and um, the ability to um, regain some balance. And so that's the next word. What is the balance? It's the imbalances. And what we find is that you know, um, when you look at the seesaw, the fulcrum point, you have a point and then the scales go this way, however, whatever visualization you want to use. And we realize that we're going from one extreme to the other. And right now in the world, it seems like it's happening very rapidly. And we're, we're going from one extreme to another extreme. And there's no space of what we call time between them. And I've mentioned time as an illusion. I look at it as space. How much space do we have between these uh, extreme flips in energy? And so when we look at this and realize, I'm not doing this. This isn't me doing this to myself. I'm in the midst of, of everything else that's doing this. So why wouldn't I be doing this? It would, be, it would be abnormal for me not to be doing this at this point in time. And what it does is encourages me to find ways to stay more stable, to more, be more balanced, to try to root myself and ground myself. So again, grounding and um, owning your pain and owning this is very important. And... We all really need to dig in deep and ground ourselves. And so the definition of blame is to hold, re, hold responsible or find fault with. So again, we want to make somebody responsible or something responsible. And then to balance is, is basically the mental or psychological state of emotional stability. So what is emotion? And you'll hear me say a thousand times, it's energy in motion. That's all it is. It's just energy in motion, emotion. It's flowing through us. And we're feeling it. Of course we're feeling it. It's driving us crazy at times. It makes us cry. It makes us happy. It, it does all this, but it's just energy. And if we are truly, which we are, the creators that we are, it's about self-mastery. It's about becoming the master of that energy and owning it and, and not blaming it on somebody else and say, oh, you charged my energy or you discharged my, or you stole my energy. Wait a minute. If this is my energy, I'm responsible for this energy. Where I send it, how I send it, how I receive it, who I receive it from who I share it with. And we have to take responsibility. And, and this is, again, responsible, sovereign co-creation. The inner and the outer self, reuniting, coming back into balance. It's, it's, on so many levels, it's so ridiculously simple. Yet, our, our brain, which has been entrained to work in programs and um, paradigms and com convoluted conceptualization, has a hard time pulling away from that, pulling away from that and being still and coming back to that fulcrum point. Because it loves to argue the, the facts. It's what it does. You have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. They're not connected. They, they, 
they communicate back and forth. Why wouldn't we be imbalanced with all that chatter? In my, personally, I, my part of my brain, this side was shut down um, from my motorcycle accident. So uh, I have a different experience than a lot of people. Uh, not going to say it, I would welcome it upon anybody, but it's mine and I own it and I do the best I can with it. I work um, as humanely as possible. So none of us like to feel unbalanced um, or incomplete. Um, it's not about anybody else to resolve that issue. It's ours. And so again, as sovereign beings and sovereign creators, we are to create that for ourselves. Not disrespecting others. Not shutting other people out. But being consciously aware that, yes, yeah, sometimes there are people that are just not going to resonate. And there are going to be things that just don't resonate. And they may have resonated our whole lives. And all of a sudden, it doesn't work anymore. Mourn them. Let them go. Realize we don't have to cling on to things. And so it brings us up to evolution. This is, what's hap this is what happens in evolution. Many of us have been through this over and over and over again. We've been birthed. We've been rebirthed. We've been on this planet. We've been on another planet. We've been in this star system, another system. We've been the energy of the universe for billions of years. We've been all of these things. And I know people will look at me and say, that's just crazy talk, Charlie. And I look and I just say, it's my talk. It's my memory. And I'm willing to allow that memory to come forth so that I can move through this moment in time in this space with planet earth with our solar system with the next larger expansion of that expression of life because i don't want to be apart from that i don't want to be separated from that any longer and i'm feeling the suffering and I don't want that. I don't want that for me. And I don't want that for anybody that I see. Anybody that I meet. Any living form. So this week has been about evolution. And the message has been continually put forth about evolution, evolution, evolution. And so um, it's basic. In the basic expression is cellular division. And in, I think, basic biology or whatever, we saw the cell, it, it split, and then the single cell split and then separated and became two cells, and then came more cells, et cetera. So this is cellular division on a you know, biological uh, level. Well, as within, so without, as above, so below, this, this, is, this is evolution. It's the evolution of that. Yet, there's a different focus of evolution that we don't, we haven't been taught. We've been taught about the separation, but we've not been taught and trained in the oneness where within that single cell, the cellular division occurred, but it, the cell never split. And it stayed. And so now you have a one single cell with instead of two cellular parts of it it has four it has eight it has 18 billion this is this is planet earth one cell one single cell pink floyd comes through <laughs> i love it and this is the, this is the division bell no we are to divide and we're and but we're to be cohesive in this single cell and right now we're at the part where we can blow this cell apart and we can end it all. And that's not trying to say I'm, you know, talking um, the end of the world theories here. But it's the reality is that potential 
is ours. We are the creators. What do we want to create? So last week I said, come back to center. Come back into the center. Pull away. I may have said it this morning, yesterday, I don't know. Um, come back from the edges of the abyss. Let's pull ourselves back into the center of this cell, however you want to look at it. This circle, I always call it the point within the circle. Let's come back into the point, the point, the point within the circle. And let's all gather together with open hearts and open minds and embrace each other and embrace, embrace our pain, embrace our suffering, embrace our love, embrace our light, embrace all of it. We're here, we're beautiful, we're creator beings. We are light. There's, it's time to own it. It's time to be it. It's time to dance in the beingness that we are. Uh, I'm looking at the little clock down there, and I and I love all of your comments on the side. I can't I can't read them, or I lose my train of thought. I love you all so dearly. Really, I will read them and and bless you all for showing up. Um, I wanted to do a little meditation. And so <laughs> five minutes before I sign on, this, this comes through. And I, so I don't even know what it says. <laughs> and I'm going to have to trust <laughs> that this meditation will be as resonant as I wanted it. My intention was to make it. And so the message is, we are not the only living forms evolving in this moment. And so how do we bring ourselves back into a rhythm within which we can truly see and feel no longer separated? Staying within wholeness of our larger, within the wholeness of our larger embodiment. So I'd like you each to take a, a deep breath Sending your energy down through your body into the earth, into the heart of beautiful Mother Gaia. I always see it as a crystalline center and I anchor there. You may see it in any shape, manner or form you want because this is your world. Let us gather now in the heart center, our heart center, visualizing a brilliant golden ray of light descending from the outer self, the higher self, down through the top of our heads and flowing into this heart space where we are all gathered. Flowing like a river of golden nectar as it gathers within our heart. Breathe into it, exhale it. This beautiful golden light of your heart. Let us bathe in its warm and deep loving kindness, knowing that in this womb of light we will become whole and complete once again. Breathe into it. Allow it to fill your complete self. Feel yourself melting into the warmth of this bliss, which passes all understanding. Knowing once again that you are whole and complete. Each of us, a part of each other, 
in harmony and balance. In joy and peace. Breathe into that. Let us remember this is who we are. as we begin to leave. All the separation behind us. And re-enter fully into this sacred and loving energy. Just feel that and know that this is who you truly are. We are one with each other. No fingers pointing either in or out. Just sitting in this beautiful golden light of self. Evolving. I'm going to ask you to slowly return to your outer self. Which will now see all of you, all of our journeys, all of everything as a whole rather than so many tiny scattered particles in a field of chaos. And I ask you to carry this feeling with you when things get rough, when things get imbalanced and come back into that heart space. And I will post this I have to, some rewriting to do um, on this but I will post this on my page and I will post it here in the side notes and I want you all to have a blessed and joyous week and when you find yourself blaming yourself or others this week take a moment take a deep breath pause And realize you don't have to do this anymore. It does not serve you. And it does not serve any living form on this planet. Or in this universe. I thank you all so very much from my heart. Um for showing up today and for those of you who will listen over the week or whenever i bless you um i send you my light my love my peace my energy have a great week and continue to hold our brothers and sisters who are dealing with the chaos as boots on the ground um, Send them your love and your light and their, your energy. Bless you. Thank you. It's been a joy to be here with you this morning. And um, have fun. You are the creators of all that you see. <laughs>